Yeah, three, two, one, let's go. Uh, show two of orange cubicle, uh, J25, is it ordinal cubicle or orange cubicle? Orange because, cubicle. Okay, because I've mistaken that a few times now. And, uh, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. yeah. So we're, uh, we're on the orange cubicle, second show. One and two still figuring out his PFP. Hype's got a new work in PFP that moves mm -hmm. his mouth. Hey, Hype, what's up? His <laughs> eyes blinked. blinked. Hey, really blinked. Up, Oh. oh, now he's got to get him a real up? mic. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. I'm uh clearing things up. I'm trying to put uh, the phone to charge and then have the space still running. So I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> All good, dude. Blink Do twice you if you're okay. <laughs> well, uh, J25, introduce our new guest. All right. Today we've got Stripes. Stripes tokens, as you know them. On, on the Twitterverse, some some people call it X, formerly known as X, uh, but he is the founder of Curated Ordinals, also known as Legendary Pepe's. Thank you for coming in today. How are you? Dude, no problem. Um, I'm doing pretty well. I, how can you be bearish on a day like today, right? Vibes are up. People are stoked. Bags are, you know, depending on how liquid they are, they're, they're okay. <laughs> they're doing well. But, but yeah, man, life's good. Life's good. Awesome, man. Yeah, good for sure. For sure. So uh, we wanted to just learn a little bit more about you. So we'll probably bounce with some questions, but maybe just start off with like your early Web3 journey and stuff. Well, the other guest was Kramer's oh. dog. Uh, Kramer, oh. Do you want to introduce? Oh, that's dog? Chio. Yeah, Chio. <laughs> the uh, man of the hour. Right. We got, we got One and two part in the flesh. Two. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, What's, up, yeah. right What's, up, What's up, Strikes? What's up, Strikes? What's up, buddy? What's up? So I got a they, question for you. Take the wallet, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I got a question for you. No, no, no. We, we need the ledger. The, the ledger. That's, that's what we're here for. <laughs> that's super. <laughs> right, right. You're a boomer. You're a boomer, Kramer. We, we, we need the ledger, man. We need the ledger. So, Strikes, uh, if you could be anywhere in the world drinking anything, what where would you be and what would you be drinking? Go oh, ahead. dude. Well, I'm loving the Aurora Borealis behind you there. Um, I so I went through a phase where it was just like Jaeger to the point where I would get yanxious hanging out with my friends. Uh so yeah, just a, a bodily Jaeger to myself down by the beach, dude. That sounds like a nice vibe right now. It's been a little too cold for a little too long. Like let's let's warm it up a bit. Yeah, yeah. I love the beach. Exactly. Cool, cool. For sure. Well, uh, yeah, if you could just tell us a little bit about like how you got into Web3 and then uh, how you got into Ordinals. Dude, for sure. Um, okay, so I guess to uh, to throw it all the way back, I, uh, dude, pandemic, things are crazy. My wife and I, we just had our first kid. We moved into our first place. And, uh, you know, in any downtime I had, I was just kind of thinking of old ways that, that I'd really kind of gotten involved in different things. Um, so I was down a YouTube rabbit hole. And mm -hmm. next thing I know, I'm looking for, you know, good cult like personalities for, for finding some videos. And, you know, at the time I was kind of starting to, to unravel the thread on cryptos and started buying things through, like I had a Coinbase account at the time and, and. Gosh, there was a few others, crypto.com, a little bit of Binance US before they got in trouble. Um, and just kind of a I I was also trying to stack things through BlockFi, right? Just kind of getting a little bit more into the the decentralized finance and what that meant. But next thing I know, I'm following cults uh like SHIB. That was a really interesting cult to be a part of for a while. Um, and they just wanted to be the doge killer. So I'll never forget the the first real win I had. I took two grand and I threw it into SHIB and walked away with like 20. And I was like, whoa, this is wild. Um, and then kind of during that time frame, I started seeing everything popping off about NFTs and ended up just catching like every falling knife on the way down. Um, but uh, because of that, like, uh, and, you know, a few little bumps through the road, I was like, I need to kind of develop, you know, a different mindset, a better trading strategy. So I kind of ended up doing that. And I learned to kind of hone just the way in which I wanted to trade where I wasn't completely losing my shirt uh, through the bear market. So a lot of mentality of, you know, uh, his, his name kind of gives it away one and two out, right? Like, don't mm -hmm. be in for too long, like do what you need to do. Um, but then I followed a uh, journey 
who was an alpha caller within a group called champs only that I was in uh, while I was kind of trying to get, get my legs more so in the handle of like NFT trading versus like, yeah, pardon my, but shitcoin training. Right. Cause it's, it's a bit of a different beast. And uh, I followed him and he was posting threads like very routinely. And I saw his one thread where it was basically like, by the way, this is ordinals. It's happening. Here's how you can get involved. And on February 10th, it was my daughter's birthday that evening. It was like 11 something. I put in my first inscription um, and yeah, woke up the next morning and it went through on the 11th and it was uh, at the time, right? Heavy in the bear market. A lot of people really just trying to look for anything to, to stay involved and not <laughs> completely get rid of their bag or dude, I've had so many people just like up and leave crypto that I was super close with. I've never heard from since, like even after touching base with them, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that kind of come in and out of the ecosystem, but I was like, yeah, th dude, this seems kind of fun. So I was super heavy in the GM cult just because, you know, a lot of people really didn't know what to do. So they were engagement farming pretty consistently. So I, you know, now a lot of people kind of consider them uh, like Twitter inscriptions or X inscriptions, but people that I was GMing with consistently on the timeline, I was like, dude, I, I have no idea what these are, like what's going to happen in the future. I just know that they're on Bitcoin and I'm having a blast. Do you want one? So I ended up putting out 25 GMs and I gave them out completely for free. And the easiest way I knew how to do that was inscribing them directly to people's wallets. Um, you know, I'd kind of seen what Ordinal's wallet had done at the time. I didn't run any transactions through, like I had a Sparrow wallet and then an Ordinal's wallet. They did the airdrop for Pixel Pepe's. And I was like, hell yeah, if this is the meta on Ordinal's, like, let's keep this going, like make it free, make it fun. Um, so I was super fortunate, right? The first inscription I did was at 61,953. And I only know that because I got it pulled up next to me. But, <laughs> you know, I've just been having so much fun since then that everyone who was a holder of that collection, I, I gave a legendary Pepe. I was like, you know, this is just, you know, for for holding on to that first inscription and, you know, just kind of being a part of whatever it is that, that may come to fruition through this. Like, here's another one. Um I ended up going through some personal stuff, which kind of ended up sucking, right? Like, you know, all the degening stopped. I had to pull like liquidity out of side bags that I had. Um, one, our car died, but it was also right after we had had somebody kind of pass in the family. So if you, you look at my trading history, you can go through my wallets and just this nice big chunk that I'm gone for. But the, the collection didn't feel complete, right? There were 25 GM, so I gave out 25 Pepe's. And I was like, you know what? I really wanted to hit that nice, that nice mimetic number of 69. Um, so I, I kind of had the idea of doing cursed inscriptions and it was something I had kind of early on that I wanted to put into practice, had the art ready, but because of personal things, it ended up being sidelined. Um, and then I came to, to kick it with the, the homies one from, from based and then two into the ordinal support desk and goosenals was just such a, like a pivotal moment in at least my like kind of ordinals history. Like I still have my first goose that I picked up for 20 bucks. Um, I've got a, I've got a nice little grid too, but dude, bag mm -hmm. bias aside, like it's, uh, because of that, whether you, you know, vibe with the project or not, I've met so many cool people that are all here. One, just trying to meet other individuals that give a, give a fuck about Bitcoin, um, that, that really kind of want to be involved in, in really what the, the future of this ends up being. And for that, like it, I think that's so cool. Um, so, you know, I don't rock my, my goose right now. I did for a bit. But uh, you know, gotta rep the the project, and uh, you know, for now, I I'm gonna I, I gave a little bit of alpha in a in a space I was in earlier. I have some uh, some intentions of some stuff that I want to do, but I like keeping it very mysterious uh, and just kind of low key. When it happens, it, it may or may not be stealth, but. I felt like I kind of had fun doing that this last time around. Um, anybody who got one of the legendary Pepe's, you know, I, uh, I say this pretty consistently, please floor them. Please send them to zero because I have people uh, outside of this ecosystem that are ready not to become exit liquidity. <laughs> so they, they want to get involved. They, they've heard me, you know, not shut up about ordinals, not shut up about Bitcoin. And recently I, I met with some of them in real life and they were, they were asking me about it. And of course, once you give updates to your friends, they're like, Oh, what are you getting involved with? Mm. So, uh, that's kind of where things are right now. Um, but dude, 
I've just been having so much fun. Like this has been a crazy year. I never thought any of this would have panned out the way in which it did, but just being able to connect with, with honestly, you guys, like, I, I feel like I have a, a relative story of just kicking it in the ordinal support desk at one point or another. Um, it's very much like that, that we work environment. Uh, I feel like I can kind of come into the space and even if I'm trying to get computer stuff done or whatever the case may be, like I can just chill and vibe, but also more importantly, still catch the alpha because the ordinal support desk is one of the only places that gives alpha in real time without dumping on your head. Most of the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anybody jump in, time. please. I did sell a crypto dick, but today only to, well, it was a Bitcoin you crypto son of dick, a bitch. but I was, hey, I had to sell it on Magic <laughs> Eden because I saw kidding. a great opportunity on OKX. And uh, yeah, if there's any great opportunities in collections that come out, always check the following. Unisat, ID Club, OKX, um, big brain alpha here, but Mm -hmm. there's like some great arbitrage opportunities elsewhere and uh also good trades if you're really looking for them but yeah that's what kind of what happened uh happening at the moment uh maybe block can speak more on this this like bitcoin crypto dick butt journey we're at now uh dick butts uh yeah i started shilling them today just uh because I missed out on dick butts. Crazy about dick butts. Yeah, yeah. Like I wanted uh, a sub 10k dick butt because I want a sub 10k piece, and I like let them slip through my fingers, and I can't like spend like four grand on a sub 10k that is just like you know something else that's like you know like a text subscription or something. I'd rather have a dick butt. <laughs> so uh, with the like the the record ordinal sale last night, right? Like the parrot sold number two. Wow. And that like led to a run on like this parrot collection on Magic Eden, uh, the Bitcoin budgies, right? Okay, so I guess it's a budgie, it's not a parrot. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, ordinal number one's a dick butt, and there's like a 5k dick butt collection out there. So it was getting sneaky swept yesterday, and I saw the volume, and uh, I don't know, just kind of wanted to talk about it today and it led to like a small run on the dick butts but that's like the thesis is like someday number one will sell for like a hundred bitcoin or something and your dick butts will run oh that's a good thesis yeah i saw it on the timeline too a little bit yeah blocks out here playing chess well, Rindell was in his space talking about it, right? Like he was in a space, and Dick Butts, Butts got brought up like randomly, like right after I had filled it. It was like mm -hmm. really convenient. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was wondering, stripes. You have uh, DMT tokens, NAT tokens popping off. You got uh, rooms that are popping off. Um, which one do you think surprised you more? Dude, honestly, probably runes for, for a couple reasons. One, I feel like everybody's doing runes right now. And, and because of that, you know, maybe there's a, a little bit of oversaturation. Um, but also, I, I guess just seeing for me, it was initially when I saw the volume on OKX for R6, because I was like, you know, I feel like just the that Eastern community is probably going to fade this. And then it, it kind of did, you know, at first, but then at, as Hype said, right, you always want to be checking for arbitrage opportunities of, across multiple marketplaces. And then when I saw them kind of getting bought up there, I was like, either one, they, they really like the fact there's liquidity here, or two, you know, maybe they're also kind of playing into the narrative. Uh, you know, maybe they, they kind of mess with the idea that, that Casey could put out something, but but yeah, I guess those are two more so like shocking, I guess, developments if I were to potentially think about it. But I mean, right now, if you're really looking at it, you have like, R it, and none of this has been released, right? It's very possible that none of these competing runes protocols that are coming out from these projects or founders, you know, are even able to get within those first 10 or like, right? It's the first 10 that everybody's trying to, to get into, I guess. Um, so I mean, I'll be interested to see if they are able to land it. Like I saw Arsic, uh, like their their page, their uh, founder or project page, whatever it is, uh, tweeting at Casey, basically asking if they could be considered for the first ten. I was like, ah, hey, all right, if it works, 
good for you. That's cool. Uh, but but yeah, I, I mean, it's all vaporware to a certain extent, but I'll be super interested to see, you know, if somebody has that much liquidity to airdrop 21,000 of those ordinals. I, I mean, I know we're in a bit lower of a fee environment, but that's that's a lot of liquidity to put up initially. I, I mean, that that's kind of how I guess I feel about runes, but I know you guys are a bit more bullish on, on Merlin and, and everything going on there. And that... That has been a, a bit of a shocker to see how much is kind of locked up over in Merlin and, and just how much valuation like that's really holding right now. Mm -hmm. So what's your thoughts on Merlin? Do you uh are you faded, invested or I faded like a moron? <laughs> no, I dude, I ended up just just getting busy it hand in too many things and and IRL caught me at a at a few points, but I, uh, the biggest issue I had initially, and I ended up talking to J25 on this, anytime I had like a time frame opportunity, I would go and try to do it and it would not be able to connect my wallet. And I found out it was because my VPN settings, like mm. the, the fact that it was kind of based in a certain country ended up just not letting me connect. And I was trying, like, I literally opened up a brand new OKX wallet. Like I was opening up new seed phrase wallets and Unisat. I'm like, what am I doing wrong here? So I uh, I still have some assets that I am looking to bridge. I've just been slow to bow and I've been missing airdrops like a moron, but I can't win them all. And, and I'll I'll take that. And Block has also been drilling it in OSD. Like, why aren't you staking on Merlin right now? Do you hate free money? And I have to be like, yeah, yeah. yeah You've yes, gotten sir. a good amount of free money from <laughs> other things though, for sure. What, that uh, drop, by the way, is $378 right now mm. wait what'd you oh, say yeah. that that was boya what yeah yeah wow i'm just looking at the site they're uh they're at 2.5 billion dollars locked up now that's uh, incredible wow yeah i think uh, it was a chain the other day boasting that they had 2 billion that was blast and that's a big deal on, on Ethereum, right? So Merlin's yeah. way past them. Uh fifty-five percent no, actually sixty percent of that total is Bitcoin, just raw Bitcoin. But like a lot of it is assets, like the blue box are almost twelve percent of that whole total. So that's two and a half billion. It's how, how are the how months. are the BRC four twenties on uh on on Bitcoin going to interact with Merlin. Like I, I, I'm not in this, you guys are all doing this, right? So depends on the asset, right? Like some of them get wrapped into tokens. So that's going to be like the blue box, the mineral, the music box, the wand, the dragon ball. Um, I'm pretty sure the dragon ball actually might be used in a game. Uh, Looks like it. Yeah. Right. The dragon verse, I think. Uh, and then other things, uh, I don't know, it just depends. Like, minerals got its whole, you know, kind of like staking kind of deal that it's doing, uh, and yielding from like miners. That's a, that's like its kind of thing. So it's very token DeFi centric, but I don't know. A lot of it's yet to be seen, right? Like, we really don't know like the future for wrapped maps and all that. Interesting. So, so the 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 assets on layer one will still be there, and it's a good strategy to just kind of hold those. Too. Well, the, yeah. the example I've used is like for the blue wand, right? It's the recursive image of a blue wand on L one, but on L two, it could be a fire wand, it could be an ice wand, it could be a plus three wand, it could come with a bag of tokens or a satchel of this, you know what I mean? They could make it into any kind of guild bundle or package that they wanted to on the, on a project level. Is that because um, it'll have like mutable attributes on the L2? Just because they can do more things with it, right? Like they could just be like, Hey, your transaction ID translates to this. You know, they just have some algorithm, you pick some piece of data within their scope and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, give it a ranking system based on what they want, the tokenomics they want. So yeah, the yeah, so holding them on L1, you're still getting that price appreciation because a lot of times these tokens yeah. will be staked and locked up. Uh, a lot of these BRC 420s that we need are going to be staked and locked up. So they technically be off the market. So you can still take advantage of them, uh, of the price appreciation on L1. 
Yeah, that's so that's that's kind of like a risk free way to take advantage of the price appreciation. Yeah, 100%. for sure. I, I was curious, Kramer, what have you been looking at recently? Uh, lately, I mean, I've been trying to read up on the runes. Uh, the runes mania minor kind of got my attention last night. Okay, why? Uh, why so? Oh, uh, just I don't know, like ever like price like, point reasonable yeah, and, and like a couple people in osd was like bullish about it and i was like all right um and then mainly just getting all my wallets set up for this pmb mint uh tomorrow mm, cool so yeah that's a good reminder yeah you want... i'm really hyped about the the puppets man i'm like really blown away by that community yeah like, you want to give us a little rundown on that uh dude i don't know like the rundown like or i mean just what you know uh, I mean, with the mid tomorrow, I guess it's like, um, it's a collab project with the puppets and OMB and, uh, hold on, I'm trying to bring up the material here, but yeah, basically, uh, puppets and OMB holders are going to have like, you know, a free mint like at, at first, and then it's going to go down to like opium holders and. Uh, CCOs and I think there's a few other things. Yeah, there's like a tiered uh, system or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, dude, like it's gonna mint out. Like by the time it gets to like the public, it's I think it's gonna last like ten seconds. Like I think everyone's gonna. If try. that, yeah, yeah, because I think it's only like a ten thousand collection or whatever. Right, and there's already how many there's OMBs? How many? Yeah. yeah. But uh, no, I'm stoked. I think it's cool. Um, Hopefully all the art is pretty original and not some copy pasta stuff. And right. Um, yeah, I'm hoping hope it runs up. And yeah. we were speak speaking a little bit about L2. Sorry, go ahead if you got something on that topic. No, no, yeah, for sure. So I, I saw um because I was doing a bit of a deep dive. I've got a an opium in shids. So you know, I qualified, but I forgot right. to spread Shid them out. Holders got it too. Yeah. yeah. So, but I forgot to spread them out across wallets. So <laughs> one mint <laughs> coming in hot. But uh, I saw that apparently there may be rarities. And the only reason I say that is uh, they had a post where somebody kind of asked that in the comments. And they, they said, yeah. So I was like, oh, okay. So that's another nice little added gamification. Because, dude, I love trading like rarities. I feel like it's one of the best ways to potentially stack right now in ordinals because there isn't anything like uh like blur right that basically kind of made it so rarities went out the window and it's uh it's just the token that you're trading per se. Um so yeah, while that's still kind of in play within the ecosystem, I feel like rarities are just a great way to kind of flip up. And I think that's a niche that you definitely have that you've talked about at the desk a lot. So for sure that's a great, you know, thing that you bring to the table. Yeah, it's it is it's definitely the alpha. The issue is is like when the when the token or the project becomes uh like less liquid, sometimes it's harder to sell those. Get things. that premium, yeah. Yeah, if you bought 100%. it at a premium price and then you're trying to offload it. You gotta be doing it into then... volume, not like while it's petering out. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the gamble for sure. <clears throat> right. Because you don't know you get it early and then you think it's going to pop off and then you end up getting stuck with it. Then you could be underwater when others could have got out and, and, you know, broke even or made a little profit. So, yeah, it's a it's a, a tricky game, but uh, it can pay off in the long run. I, I look for rarities also. So Definitely. how is this um, PMB meant going to be? Is it like Orsbot or is it... Uh, uh, yeah, I believe it's on inscribed now. Yeah. And uh they're gonna be free. And then I think it's like 10 bucks. 10 bucks after that or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's Pretty four reasonable. phases. Inscribed now, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. East or AM Eastern uh for OMB and Puppets. Phase two is whitelist, 10 to 12, phase three. I'm working man hours. I fucking love this shit, dude. Yeah. <laughs> phase phase three, that'll be you and me, Kramer. That's noon. And then phase four is public. I don't think it gets there though. That's yeah, it too. I really doubt it. Yeah, we'll go. 10K? Go 10K, 10K, sir. Yes. So are, are they going to be previewable? Are we going to be able to preview them? I think you can do that with Inscribe now, right? You can kind of pick what you want. That's the one that where, I've yeah, you put it. them in the queue and then it like dumps them back or whatever. 
Yeah, but sometimes I've seen them also do like the placeholder. Yeah, yeah, but I also yeah. seen sometimes they've done a placeholder before too. True. Yeah. Yeah, and then after this, I think I'll uh, stake my puppets in Maryland. It's the only reason why they're not in there right now. Right on. Hey, Kramer, what does the CCO cats have to do with the puppets? Uh, it's the, one of the artists. Um, it's I, Sorry, I don't have any of this information in front of me right now. But um, do yeah, you know no. stripes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the CCOs, it's the same artist that did the shids, which they used kind of an AI model that they trained on like previous Wasi art. So they were able to kind of do the same with the the Bitcoin puppets, but it, it just has like a cat variation to it, um, which, you know, it, I saw people posting on the timeline like, oh, CCO is the move. And I'm like, wait till you hear about shids, which I feel <laughs> like happened with the puppets. Everybody's like, holy shit, the puppets flipped the opiums. And I was like, yeah, it was like the super small window. But it it shows that like a lot of the liquidity coming into the ecosystem right now doesn't have any like relative understanding that these individuals were likely making art prior. So you can almost kind of gauge that as a relative meta. So if you see a collection popping off by an artist and you're like, I know that they've been doing this for a while and you can find out if they have a previous collection, then that to me is kind of maybe potentially the big brain move. Uh, I mean, in a similar vein to like what Block was saying with the, uh, the crypto dick butts, right? Like if you're looking at inscription number one, then you're like, okay, so if this ends up drawing attention and hype towards it like is there anything else that maybe fits within that same narrative or meta or whatever the case may be and you can think maybe preemptively before some of these other individuals come to the same conclusion so, so bullish you cats. About... <laughs> yeah block i know you like them too i saw you pick up some uh yeah i did i picked up a handful i didn't spread my wallets out they did their snapshot earlier than stated uh but yeah I, I missed it i'm gonna get one tomorrow so what do you guys think about rune stones have you guys got stones yet oh, what's oh up? my god i'm still so waiting scared, like over 200 of those i'm a fuck man i hope well they... now the mempool is way higher so it's like gonna cost them more and i was curious i just thought of this today did they keep an allocation of like bitcoin for etching the runes because they're gonna have to ask for donations again in the future if they haven't yeah, matter, that's the crazy things, it. right? Like you drop the rune stones, but you got to drop the runes after runes launch. So it's like got to be dropped twice. Mm -hmm. I don't know how this is all going to work, but uh, is it per wallet? When you said you got 200, Kramer, like you got 200 so wallets. and It was all based on uh, percentage of holders per project. So there was like a list of projects. There was a big list put out. Yeah, it was it was a lot, dude. Uh, I, was oh, happy I thought they say... said you had to have three inscriptions. I thought that's all the three inscriptions per wallet. Maybe. I, I don't remember. I just remember there was like a big giant list. And then there was a wallet checker Lee and I just put out. And I put them in there and just kind of added up everything I was going to get. So It told so you, you got... how many runes you were going to get like for that particular wallet? No, yeah, it's yeah, one exactly. per wallet. It's yeah. one per wallet, right, Kramer? I thought it was one no, per wallet. It'll tell you if one per, uh, I think one per uh, collection. If I brought it up. It said how many I am available to get here. I thought it was one so per wallet. From my understanding, it's one per wallet, minimum three inscriptions at the snapshot, but it doesn't matter if you have more or less. That's well, happy, it you have they, less. Were to, they were trying to level the playing field for whales and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Really? That's crazy. So I think you maybe you're doing the multiplier, but yeah. The and yeah, no, no exceptions for uh collections. Like that, you could get more than one per wallet. Like you were dividing by three with all your inscriptions to say you would get like six or something. You know, if you had eighteen inscriptions in there. I mean, I was just going off of what the wallet checker said. I got you. It gave you a number what you were gonna get. If you yeah, I've kind of just had them had like a ton of wallets. Well, then, dude, you're good. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you'll get plenty, but yeah, I don't. I don't know if you'll get that many. I've been right. of the mindset. I will see them when I'll believe it when I see it kind of thing. Like when they get there, I'll, you know. Well, well, Leo said it. <laughs> Leo said last Thursday, it would either be Friday to Tuesday. So it's already Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think feelings brought it up that he tweeted out early on. And that's why he's probably brought a lot of this FUD on was like, oh, like, oh, they dropped this and I didn't get one. I'll show you how to do this better, blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, kind of said, I can do it better. 
and now you're seeing that it's not that easy to do stuff right especially yeah. when you have to ask for funding and at, you know all these other things dude um, we are right 100%. on the heels of an explosion in like token activity too so like it's maybe not going to go back to 10 like I, I found it interesting expensive. how the, the lantern ceremony in the last week of Chinese New Year seemed to be the end of that, and it really kicked off right after that. Um, yeah. What do you mean go back to 10, Block? Well, the mempool slipped under 10. Oh, Sats for um, yeah. Got you. Yeah. And it, like, it literally stopped uh, Sunday night EST. Like As soon as China woke up that Monday morning, it started to creep back up. Dude, on top of that, airdrops are hard. Like making sure that you have all your ducks in a row, everything lined up. It's a lot of data. Yeah. And yeah. if you're running it back, dude, like I, I I messed up when it came to the allocation for legendary Pepe's. Like I accidentally sent one to the wrong wallet for I one. I fucked holder. up in Sparrow before. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, dude. It's so not it, easy. It it was one of those like it it is what it is, but Dude, that's a lot. And then they have how many wallets that they're airdropping it to? Like a hundred and twelve thousand of them. Right. I hope they just have like a nice like syst you know systemic approach for what they want to do because it, it's not it's not easy and I mean you guys brought up a really good point right you got to airdrop the first set of ordinals and then you got to figure out how you're getting them the actual runes like the second mm -hmm. time around so I mean you guys brought up like does that incur another round of funding like hopefully they've got at least something on the back end or you know in preparation for that at least and, and how wild is the mempool going to be like at that time right. I think what they should do is like uh, do a claim process. That would be cheaper. Like mint it out. To offset like the it. initial claim so they can keep the money to send out the runes later on. Yeah. yeah. You know for what sure. the, ki the kill shot for BRC20s would be is if Doge started kicking off and it ran the mempool field so high that they couldn't uh, drop their runes. Mm -hmm. The Doge yeah, BRC20. Touch with all yeah. the Doge influencers ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this one came across, this is what I was going to bring up next. We were kind of talking about layer twos, but uh, Mara, Marathon Digital Holdings, a NASDAQ company, you know, that's been in mining, uh, is doing an L2 play. I found this really surprising, being a U.S. stock company, getting into layer two. So um, I, don't, I don't know if we have to go on it a lot, but um, I just thought that was really interesting as a U.S. company is making a Bitcoin L2 play. Yeah, it's it's called Enduro, and it's described as a platform built on the Bitcoin network that allows for the creation of multiple side chains. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like they're trying to do drive chain without the bit, basically. Right. We'll see. It's a big player. It will, and who knows if they're you know kind of teaming up with uh, Paul Stork and that team. You know what I mean? They might be quiet about that to start, and then say, "Look, here's our working model. Like, when can we?" move this bit forward right yeah what does that say about like l1 assets though if 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 all of these l2s are coming aboard um and value is going into l2 does that and the assets are going to be created on l2 does that mean the l1 assets like a random sub 10k is going to be very, really valuable for that reason I think it yeah, so L1 on assets will get dragged into layer twos if the layer twos are smart, like kind of what Jeff's been doing. I think that's the that's the move for those. I think it depends on the collection, and I think it depends on whether the 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 person who's uh, running collection provides some type of utility on layer two. Yeah, project by project is that's kind of how I see it. There's going to be a lot of people competing for these funds for sure, as we've seen already. And this is just another player. I just found it mostly interesting that it was a U.S. player. You know, Block, that's a really good point. I didn't think about how well Merlin had basically helped to deploy and then bring those L1 assets into a layer two solution like that. My, that my gears are kind of turning now. That's interesting. Yeah, that was like the genius play like Jeff pulled off was kind of like uh, like really getting friendly with everybody in Ordinals and like really, uh, <laughs> you know, buddying up with the the Bitmap community, which is like the strongest community in the space, like really. Uh, the biggest community but, in the space. Yeah, like 
go on the timeline and FUD bitmap and look at your engagement. You'll get good engagement. <laughs> so Have it a few yeah, times. yeah, he did a great job. Like they're almost 30% all bitmaps are stuck in there. And even like stuff like the bit disc, it's uh you know, not exclusive to Merlin, but it's over 55% locked in there. So it's kind of part of Merlin now. Huh. So do they have any plans to do anything with Merlin? BitDisc? Uh, BitDisc is, I don't know, they're supposed to do some kind of airdrop. I don't know what they got in store, but they're like, you know, an over-collateralized stable coin. Uh, I think they're airdropping like maybe an ecosystem or community or governance token is what it is. Uh, but I'm not sure. I really don't know. Did they give any updates on the inscriptions that didn't make the uh, the, the invalid invalid? ones? I don't believe so. Not yet. They didn't. It's just uh, still the way it is, Like, which is like, you know, they're going to chuck some tokens your way. But it probably won't be a lot, if I had to guess. Yeah. So, Block, what you've been looking at? What's the most exciting thing that you've been looking uh, at? Bitcoin price. That's That's been it today. Um, yeah. yeah, it's all about the price just, like, uh, trumps everything. And then, like, the altcoin setups. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pull something up here. Yeah, like, Ordi. $77 right now, but like broke 80 uh earlier today. If it like puts in a daily close above 83, that's like a new all-time hit daily close high. So uh yeah, I think all of these are gonna break out. Like I'm very bullish on a on an all season. We just need Bitcoin to settle down a bit. Bitcoin's just getting started. Yeah, if we hit some nice kind of like chop here for a bit, I feel like that'd be super healthy for like the ordinals ecosystem. Because if we just, you know, if we keep ripping up that, that we're going to slowly see it all teeter down. So if we see that, that I feel like that'd be nice. But also if, if we rip, like that's also kind of what we're here for, right? Like send Bitcoin to 100K and Valhalla further. Yeah, so like if it if uh in the short term it like really has like tremendous upside and we go to like six figures or something, the collections are gonna hurt for it, but the money's gonna slosh in even harder. Uh, I mean there'll be more money floating around, right? And but like yeah, it's gonna be like an adjustment in prices for sure. And like, yeah, you wanna be on like the tier one collections that'll like hold up against it, right? Quantum cats, I think, are one of those, and there's you know. OMBs and stuff. Node monks, Bitcoin frogs. Goosenals. Goosenals. Honk, honk. Honk. Honk, honk. No, it's honk. been impressive. It'll definitely be nice to see what happens. But yeah, I think Eric uh, brings this up a lot. Uh, BRC20s. He talks a lot about like, will your assets outpace Bitcoin? And it's really tough to do that when Bitcoin's ripping like this. Maybe it catches up after it chills out a little bit but you know what i mean you have that seesaw effect of like collections tokens back to bitcoin or it used to be a lot of people said bitcoin ethereum into the alts or you could throw in you now nfts or into the alts category or whatever but I, like a lot of things i think we're seeing like I, it seems like everything's out of cycle um like in the fall we had it where it was like tokens were bleeding into ordinals and then this time it seems like ordinals is leading the way and then bitcoin ripped and so it's just been kind of like all over the place helter skelter in my opinion re at least recently well, one of the good things going for for the ordinals is that the new people coming into the ecosystem would you rather have like 0 0.00001 of a bitcoin or would you buy an ordinal you know what I mean? Like they can still say they have Bitcoin or they're invested in the Bitcoin ecosystem. They have ordinals. Ordinals better. What's that? One and two. Ordinals are gonna be better. Right. Because you you have the faster price appreciation in, in most instances. Well, that right, and I mean, who's the liquidity coming in if not the NFT DGENs from Ethereum and Solana, right? So they're already kind of like preemptively used to holding JPEGs versus maybe having that liquidity ready. Um, so once we have, I guess, more of the the retail coming into Bitcoin, I mean, do you guys think that that's going to follow similarly to what we saw with the NFT bull run back like 
2021-2022 era? Oh, I do. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy that we're at this price level and like retail and like people haven't really woke up to it. It's crazy. Uh I think it's this is the kind of move now that like will wake up the rest of the market and like now with now it's going to get like really fun, right? If like projects are smart and like Bitcoins and everything, like everything on Bitcoin right now, like they'll they'll take advantage of like the attention and the price. And you know, uh I think ordinals are gonna do amazing. I mean, as long as yeah, we're think... shouting out awesome ordinals project, make sure you're checking out the Bitcoin worms. Mm-hmm. Ordinal, ordinal worms. worms. He called it. Right. Of, uh... <laughs> you can check out the Bitcoin worms too. They're cool. Don't forget legendary Pepe. Yeah, don't forget the legendary Pepe's. Yep. Send mine straight to cold storage. He can't even get ordinal worms right on a (laughs) recorded stream, (laughs) dude. Yeah. No, but speak, I was just speaking about those real quick and then I'll pass it back. But yeah, I just uh, really appreciate that. I think it's super cool that you've taken the time and your sats to just donate to people in the space and just make, you know, things fun. Um, that's one thing that you always bring to the table, you high energy, having fun, and you've been giving back to the community, uh, overall for a long time. So I just want to say thank you for my gift and I thank you for everybody. Dude, no problem. Like I, I also felt very fortunate to like give them out to some of the people that I did. Like it, I feel like so much of this has just been community effort and hanging out and getting to know one another, but also like consistently pushing one another to be better and and like i i feel like i can go into the ordinal support desk or or whatever the the case may be right fuck up in real time but also in real time learn how to not make that similar mistake twice and because of that right now um i'm buying an ordinal worm please don't front run me <laughs> Son of a bitch. i gotta put in my my password let me just yell that out. ABC one two three. Yeah, yeah. Let me just yell that out right, right quick on stream. Well, we're not live at OSD, so somebody. Yeah, yeah it's a little problem. different now, right? Only other person may be blocked right now. <laughs> you could uh, inscribe it on chain so you don't forget it. Well, I I was just somebody's exit liquidity. You can see my uh my pending transaction, but no, like I it's been uh it's what? Hold on. Oh, insufficient oh, funds. Thank you, thank you so much, Trice, for buying my bag. Was it your bag? <laughs> I do not have my ordinal worm listed. Okay, there we go. The pending transaction is going out, dude. I got ordinal worm number four, so Fuck I'm yeah. not. Cool. Yeah, I'm not ordinal worm number one, but but I'm top five. I'm you're top four. five. Like that's pretty yeah, good. You're top five. That's a nice worm. Hell yeah, let's go. So Any other now, projects now we should be here... buying up right now? More legendary Pepe's. Uh, I want to talk about legendary Pepe's. Are you still in talks with the artist that made legendary Pepe's? Uh, yeah, Running Blood. I can hit him up. Why? Where are you? Oh no, no. I'm just, I'm just asking. Like, uh, trying to get sentiment of like what the next thing to come out of curated ordinals would be. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I will say from that, uh. Any information in regards to any of the art that's been put out is on the the handle at Curated Ordinals. Um, I put out the first collection. I did the art for that. I mean, it's it's GMs. It was super simple. It was very easy to get on chain at a, like a nice price point. Um, and I actually I hit him up because I first found him through the Bitcoin Goblins, um, and uh, I was just a super fan of his art and, and some of the other stuff that I'd seen come out from him. So I, you know, I messaged him and I was like, you, you seem to be a very fast turnaround time artist. And at the time, everybody, like it was a race to see how many ordinals you could get under a certain like inscription number. It, and it was kind of weird, right? Like it, it felt odd that everybody was like, everything after this won't matter. But it was also kind of a narrative being pushed at the time by, you know, people, yeah. I, I guess that are now considered ord fluencers. Um, so yeah, I hit up running blood cause he was super quick with his turnaround time and we were able to get, you know, the first 25 legendary Pepe sub one mil. Um, and I I've hit him up since, and that's kind of how we got the, the art for the, the cursed variants that we inscribed later on hype. Thank you for all of your assistance there. Cause you're the fucking goat. 
Um, and anybody sleeping He's on you is sore. Oh, mm. dude, the goose. <laughs> well said. Well said. Um, but uh, but yeah, I um, I think the next kind of variant of what's coming isn't gonna be of the same vein. Uh, it it could be right. Like I, I don't want to say no, but I think I said this one and two hours in the space. I can't remember if it was recorded or not. I literally have five folders sitting on my desktop right now, all with art. All that could go literally in any direction. But dude, I kind of like going slow with it. I kind of like not announcing my next move. And not only that, like if you're looking at what projects have really kind of come up and had staying power, they they fit their own niche, right? So with the first two collections, GMs at the time, like that was kind of the staple for me, at least of the bear market. The Pepe's, like if you don't know, like previous counterparty assets, like Pepe runs very deep in like the Bitcoin lore, even just internet lore in general. Um, so I think the next thing has to have some type of memetic staying power uh, because I, I personally, especially is, at this time- Is right, it the I'm puppets? Not, Dude, I am not running any kind of derivative puppet mint. Um, the one yesterday or tomorrow, right? I hope that absolutely rips for everybody who has whitelist, uh, for everybody that gets in that. But no, I'm not making a, a puppet derivative because I feel like, especially now that I have like an opium and I, I've kind of not only had like my shids, but been connecting with more of that community on Twitter, like they're, they're authentically themselves in a very different way. Like they joke a lot about autism and I'm like, I mean, that's very much like a niche here on X, uh, you know, this is YouTube. So maybe not necessarily the same audience, but, uh, be, because of that, like they're, they're authentically themselves in their own way. And I think if you find your specific path forward, that's your niche that has its own kind of memetic potential for you, like, do what what rings true for you, right? And I mean, with uh, different groups like the based community, they're very, very artist centric. And there's there's things that I've made online, but in my opinion, everything is a derivative of a derivative. So if you don't have something that people connect with, like uh, honestly, uh, to a certain extent, who cares, right? But also if you have your own super fans, like the, the people that really fuck with you, they're going to care no matter what it is that you put on chain, just because they want to support you. They want to be part of whatever it is that the collective forming around it, that you're creating, that you're trying to, you know, for a while there, it was just like, let's give the attention to Bitcoin. Let's bring eyes to the fact that this should be the ecosystem that everybody fucks with, because th this is it. This is the big show. Like if you're not hip with the orange coin, then you are missing out and you've been missing out this entire past year. But now you're trying to like play catch up and, and see what's really here. And the people that come from these other ecosystems, right? Like ETH, and then they don't bring anything to the ordinals community. They don't provide any value. They're not assisting others. They're not educating. They're not onboarding anyone. Like, I mean, in some cases they're entertaining, right? But I mean, we just saw the the mint from the the founder, what with dead fellas and the ordinals community kind of left them on bread. Like, and, and this isn't to, to pull any project through any kind of negativity but like it's one of those if you come here with a paid mint and you're not you haven't reached out to anybody you're not really connecting with anybody who has this prior time spent in the trenches of ordinals of this bitcoin ecosystem that in large part is growing because there are spaces like osd that run 24 hours that answer anybody's questions they'll talk to any founder dude they'll run it back with anybody they don't care they want to know why you love bitcoin and why you're here because of it and if you're not taking that time to connect with individuals they're not gonna fuck with you they're not going to spend their hard-earned sats because we've already watched wave after wave after wave of grifters come in, rinse the entire ecosystem, that's, and then either dip or now they're on to something else. That's a good point. Like, how do you feel like the culture will be different on Bitcoin like than it was last cycle? Uh, well, I can only speak from my own perspective, and I, I hope that so much more of that that low cost or even free mint narrative keeps moving forward. Like, I, I mean, I know I'm biased by having a goose, but like, what a dope free mint. Like, what a great way to just literally have a grassroots effort from basically zero, right? You're just paying the inscription cost so you can have it in your own wallet. Like that, that just created such a strong narrative. It created such a tight knit community. And I mean, to, to the puppets, right? Like that was a $10 mint. 
So, you know, they were literally only taking enough to like be able to sustain as like artists, founders or or whatever the case may be. Right. But, you know, if I, I think I saw the the founder of that, uh, you know, that community tweet out, he was like, I swept a shit ton of puppets and then gave them out to friends for free. I started doing the math on that. And then I got sick at realizing how many thousands of dollars I've literally just given out. But because of that, like that to me is the narrative on Bitcoin underlying, like helping bring people to the mother chain. All roads lead back to Bitcoin. And if you were here early, there were people that were willing to walk you through it, hold your hand and take you step by step at exactly what the process is. So I would love for that ethos, that thought process to permeate further on Bitcoin. But dude, it'll depend. I mean, this is one of the reasons why like, I, I have a node monks honorary right, but I didn't mint node monks. And maybe it was because initially it was promoted as a free mint that then became a Dutch Dutch auction. I mean, myself as well as a lot of other people that left a really bad taste in their mouth of of what you know was kind of coming for the ecosystem. And then what do we have after that? We have a point one mint. Where literally 333 Bitcoin gets kind of taken from the ecosystem. And whether it's, I mean, uh, it, are they putting forward like a BIP, right? A Bitcoin improvement proposal? Like if so, I hope it gets passed. I hope for the the benefits of all the holders, it, it keeps going up because like that, that makes everybody win, right? You don't want people upset about being exit liquidity and buying tops. But I mean, it kind of pushed open the door, right? So th it's very possible we see people coming in and trying to do a higher cost mint basis. I, I don't know. Like I haven't seen anything other than the shadows that had their their goaded bid right for 0.2. <laughs> uh, and I mean, it was hard to watch that because so many people ran for the exit afterwards. So many people were like, I'll, I'll take the loss on this because I didn't get you know the sub, what was it? Like 1K ordinal that they were trying to get at the time. So I I go back and forth like I fud a lot of projects but I also believe fud is fuel whether you you know somebody's talking positively or negatively about your project I think it's overall going to be like a good thing because it's bringing more attention to it but I hope I hope that there are more founders that have the capability of maybe doing some of these free mints or, you know, kind of one and two brought it up earlier, like having people inscribe for themselves like that saves on cost basis. So I would I would say as far as like previous collections that I have, dude, I only have 25 in the first collection and 69 in the second. I, I think I can manage, you know, some future airdrops as long as we're not like crazy in the sap per V-byte range, like up of what, 500, 600 to what it was running up when things were like red hot. But, you know, I uh, I, I think that the, it's doable and you don't need to necessarily come into ordinals and drop a 10K in order to, to get any kind of recognition or to start building a community or to just find people that really like fuck with you and what you want to do. So I, I say this in a lot of spaces, dude, if you've never inscribed anything to ordinals, stop what you're doing and do it right now. Like, especially if the sat per V-byte is low, go put something on chain just to literally even see how the process works. Like it, it's, it's mind opening in a certain extent and, and that it's going to outlive us. Like that to me is so fucking cool. Like I have things that I, if I wanted to, I could have passed down to my, my great, great, great grandchildren, whether that'll have like value then or not like this, this so far surpasses me or anything that I I've really done up until this point. Like if you're not bullish on ordinals, if you're not bullish on Bitcoin DeFi, like if you haven't been paying attention, please stop what you're doing, get out a notepad and pen or whatever you use to take notes and just dive headfirst into the ecosystem. Because once things really start ripping, like we saw it, what, and Block, please correct me if I'm wrong, but touch like 64K today, like there's a quick yeah. wick or like something around that point. We are almost back to Bitcoin all-time highs. It is almost true that everyone who has ever bought Bitcoin up to this point is now in profit. Like that's so fucking exciting. So like if you're not paying attention to this, you are going to miss like one of the craziest opportunities that that we've seen yet in Bitcoin. Like J25, I think I was talking to you the other day and, and you told me that you were in a laser eyed maxi space and they said that every halving we add a zero. And I was just like, whoa, like if we get there, dude, that's short term before we even realize it.
Yeah, I just uh, that that what, like little thing that they brought out, I'd never heard that said before. You know, I'd heard like different flow to this charts and and other things TA, but I just never heard that simple like every having we add a zero, and uh, maybe that always won't hold true, but it has thus far, and that's pretty interesting. Gotta go by those trends, dude. I, I mean, well, how many times have you seen it on the timeline now that history doesn't repeat but it rhymes? How how does ordinals like change the whole? dynamic though because the last havings there weren't ordinals and now there's ordinals and it's a, a black hole i've been hearing that a few times now what does that mean for the price though of bitcoin locks got a pretty solid bitcoin black hole theory i don't want to put words in his mouth so it block if you want to you know kind of uh give the the over there that'd be great well yeah it just means new kinds of interactions so it it is uh rex uh, as a value prop for a lot of like the alt alt chains right <laughs> like if you can do that stuff on bitcoin or close to bitcoin then uh liquidity is just gonna like migrate that way uh yeah it, it really does a lot of damage uh and it like increases the the surface area of the black hole like uh it can touch more sectors of the of different economies um which is just like incredibly bullish and we're so we're so early right DeFi is going to get rebuilt again on bitcoin and it's going to draw like so much liquidity and so much attention it's, it's going to be ridiculous it, re it really is I'm, I'm curious what you're thinking kramer since you've been around a good while too uh no i think um it's going to get fucking crazy for sure um i think yeah it, like all this art that's going on Bitcoin, it's going to last forever. Like all the stuff that's on ETH and all these other chains, you know, it's like the art is stored somewhere else. Like I, I, I can open up a, like a Ethereum wallet and there's like, like tokens that have no art anymore. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's shit like that. That's, that's not going to happen over on this side. I think the DeFi angle is overlooked really uh, way too much because there's so much liquidity wrapped up in that on, on ETH and other chains because of the smart contract. And if you can find a way to inherit the security of Bitcoin while doing DeFi mechanisms, that kind of is like opening Pandora's box, in my opinion, because that's always been the criticism of Bitcoin is how do I earn returns on my Bitcoin? I have to move away from Bitcoin, which has more risk. But if you could do it basically on Bitcoin with less risk and ideally more security, that's you know a good compromise that can bring more DeFi aspects over over time. What's the best uh, DeFi platform you guys have been using? I know Stripes has been doing it more than me, but Liquidium, I think, is the best one right now. Yes, sir. Uh, dude, I'm waiting to see what they end up releasing with V3 here. Uh, I think that's going to potentially be exciting. They, they just keep teasing. Any timetable on that that you've heard? So I heard, I guess, rumors that it was this week and they, okay. they started like uh, posting like kind of a loading bar. Mm. But uh, but yeah, no, Liquidium, okay. it's aside from the fact that I've been sitting here itching with it locked up, right? Uh, for a <laughs> couple 16... more days. Oh, dude, I know. Wait, hold on. I've got it. I've got the timer right here. Uh, two days and four hours. So 16 days was the, the entirety of the loan. And uh, basically what I put in, I've got 2.85% interest coming back. Um, or, you know, they default on the loan and then the JPEG is mine. And then uh, I got to kind of figure out how I'm going to play it from there. Uh, but, you know, shout out to After Hours uh, from the, the Bitcoin Benjus community. Uh, he has also been kind of following me into some... Uh, some Bitcoin lending over on Liquidium. And he had a nice little flip, actually. He was telling me he did it with an RSIC and somebody defaulted. And he basically was able to sell it right at the top for 0.1. And I was like, what a nice dub. Mm -hmm. Good game, sir. But, yeah, uh, it, yeah, it adds a whole game theory to the whole experience. Definitely, definitely. And I, I think that it, it also kind of helps... Um, you know, for a lot of projects that are of larger size, right, you can kind of get an idea of what that, that underlying value is that people are willing to lend out their Bitcoin for. So even if, you know, you aren't seeing maybe buys on a collection, you can potentially see maybe what the, the community or anybody who's interested is willing to kind of value that at initially. One-tenth of 1% 1 of all Bitcoin in existence that will ever be is locked up in Merlin Chain. 
Uh, when that comes, yeah, when that unlocks, like they're gonna have like they're all these dApps are gonna hit, like including like whatever minerals cooking, and I think a lot more. Uh, yeah, it's gonna get like really pretty wild over there if like like Jeff delivers on like what he says he's gonna deliver. It's it's billions of dollars, and there's just a couple coins with like thirty million dollar. Like, well, there's one with like a thirty million dollar market cap, and that's it. Um, there's like a lot of DeFi to be done. Uh, like we're just getting started. All right, sir. I, I just have one quick question, right? I have this new sick ordinal worm. Uh, is staking going to be available on Merlin? It might be. I don't know. Hell I don't know. Hell yeah. It might be. You never know. I really like this is what's cool about Merlin too. Is like if you get like different services that make it easier for collections to uh like interact with their community then the, the all the better right yeah <laughs> actually yeah and i actually uh stake it they've been hanging out in osd a little bit i talked to them they're gonna come by and chat with us they're doing a product kind of like rats pad where it's just like you know website points but it allows you to make it for your collection and then you can have said points be for whitelist or claims or whatever it just gives you another mechanism another tool um to do it with just a website so whether it's with the l2 which maybe has more functionality if you want to actually do assets or maybe this could be like a bridge gap but yeah i invited them to come by so we can pick their brains a little bit more and see what they're building so i i think it's great anybody that's building anything even if you know i don't understand it it's probably going to go to the moon and then we've definitely seen that with a lot of nat things lately um I, we can dive into that hole if anybody wants to but i'm probably not be the one that leads the way there not gonna make it not gonna make I'm, it. i'm uninformed i have yeah. nothing to say block what do they talk about in the blue box chat do they just show the blue box all the time and they're trying to figure out what car we're driving is it a fast car is it a space car uh don't fall out i see that a lot um <laughs> That's funny. I should have a little peek over there. Like, there's a lot of Boya trading talk, actually. I've, I've seen a lot of that. Um, but not a lot of, like, uh, at least lately, like, genuine alpha. It's hmm. it's a lot of just like, oh, this guy floored a blue box. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, he fell out of the car. Let's go. That's, like, kind of what they're doing over there right now. Interesting. Oh, and they're like, comparing like who has the biggest Merlin Steel team. Um, I gotta shout out everybody on the uh my team, I guess. It is I guess I'm the cap. I'm the cap. Is it maxed out? Look, is that is it maxed out? Are you at the max members? No, oh. so they they upped it to five hundred. Yeah, uh, there's a bunch of spaces now. Yeah, there's a lot of new space, and we're at like uh, 19, 19 Bitcoin locked in. So yeah, the next level is yeah. fifty, though, right? Like the next bonus. Yeah, next level fifty. Yeah. But Jeez, yeah, it's uh, yeah. Okay. I my people. little team, <laughs> my little team is responsible for nine hundred fifteen <laughs> bitmaps being locked up, chugging along. How do you feel about that? one and two is like less on the main chain <laughs> what about what hey, you hey, if merlin rugs it's bullish for uh bitmap supply oh no because i mean the <laughs> thing is somebody has it you know they will have to burn those address they have to send it to satoshi's wallet for it to be bullish. then he's gonna wake up and floor all that shit with you know background <laughs> images and stuff damn it satoshi <laughs> <laughs> map daddy yeah. all right hey j25 you wrote down uh top 10 fuds of the month did you want to uh -huh. go through that or um i guess we can yeah i was kind of it is the end of february right so yeah we could do that let me pull it up here real quick um i didn't know if you wanted to maybe help a little bit kramer if you wanted to find that in the discord i'll, I'll start it off though um i guess we'll go counting down right yeah how did you do it like uh, we just what were, is the... we were just making up things, kind of uh, thinking up ideas. Okay, so in, in no particular order. Oh, I think you're muted, buddy. Sorry, I was looking at the. Discord. It's all good. 
Uh, but yeah, this is just an idea we were thinking about doing, so uh, we can dive into it. I guess number number 10, I'll use a one and two suggestion. Uh, Merlin swap, some people unfortunately not getting their claim or airdrop uh, due to uh, the wallet not working or whatever it may be. I know they made special considerations, but yeah, unfortunate if people didn't actually get that nice juicy airdrop slash claim. So make it better next time. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting because uh, some people, I think Hype might have been one of the persons, some people said, well, Merlin Swap did say they were only going to give 80 to the people that didn't claim or couldn't claim, which I thought was kind of strange where they took 10, I guess, to offset the cost. Um, but as you see now, the tokens are, what, $3 each or something? So that's... Uh, about what thirty dollars each on every uh ten that they took off the top, so it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know what that turns into. I don't know if that's really a fair thing, especially if they tried to claim it and they couldn't claim it. You yeah, know, but I know I was can't... able to do it on many wallets, but yeah, I think at the time it was like eight bucks or ten bucks roughly because it came out about a buck. So yeah, it just depends on the time horizon too. Try so you try. Oh, go ahead. You sorry. got your hype. You, you, did you have any issues? You said they just airdropped you the whole ninety or what? Uh, no, they airdropped me eighty. So, like, I had a few separate wallets that I did not have any Merlin Bitcoin in, but I got the airdrop of eighty in each of them. Uh, I did. I was able to claim two from two different wallets, and yeah, we paid about eight to like it was around like eight to fifteen dollars, uh, roughly for like that to claim that airdrop. Uh, I didn't claim it on like three other wallets after hearing, oh, we are going to extend the deadline and there was not really any deadline. Like after the extension, there was not like, oh, you have like the deadline ended. There's an extension of two days, three days. So I just, I just said, whatever. I think they're just going to airdrop it. And that's kind of what happened. Right on. You want to do number nine, Kramer? Uh, yeah, I thought we were going to do this like a David Letterman style. I, 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 we got just jumped into it. We can do the next one better, I guess. Uh, Smash through them. What's yeah. that? Smash through them. Yeah, let's just we'll yeah. go quicker. So, um, we don't have a 10. What's 10? We just did 10. So do nine. Oh, okay. So top 10 foot of the month. Number nine, Ordy map rug. Oof. You didn't get any Ordy maps, did you? Uh, number eight, Runestone delays. That's frustrating. Number seven, Nat patterns. What are what are Nat patterns? Not arbitrary. <laughs> the, the all of the different tokens that they're launching now, like Nat cats, uh, Nat attributes. You missed that one. Yeah. Wow. Nat yeah. Let's, okay. let's keep powering right. through them, and Ten then we can go through the them. Month, yeah. Number six, new bitmap com leader. What? Number five, Merlin Seal, Merlin Seal's rug. Number four, Unisat locked up swap. Oh, that shit hurts. <laughs> uh, number three, Hell Money cosplay. Yeah, what the fuck, man? Yeah. You, you need to get a stylus. Number two, transfer inscription exploit. Yo, everyone's <laughs> gonna be really upset when they find out their inscriptions are rugged. Yeah, that shit sucks. Number one, <laughs> top ten foot of the month, Uxel. Wait, sorry, I gotta do that over again. Number one, uh, hold on. Top ten foot of the month, number one, Excel spreadsheets runes. Very know. good. I like it. Yeah, no, I, I like. I, I wasn't aware of that one. What's that number? What's that first one? Excel spreadsheet runes. Uh, yeah. because the runes protocol is not out so technically oh. you just have a number on a page in an excel uh, spreadsheet yeah r6 yeah, I got you. yeah well i mean any of them really like even the rune guardian if the diff different models like they can't give you the runes until the protocols launched right okay and then the the new bitmap com leader was like community leader with uh jack lou changing his name to jack bitmap and being the bitmap now that was what that meant yeah do you think he likes jeff now i i was there for that interview they, or they, that space what a is... great interview. Nah, I don't think he likes Jeff. No, he doesn't I like Jeff. Okay, because right. yeah. hey. I think he still doesn't like Layer Two. He still kept saying, "Why yeah. would you go to Layer Two? He's a professional, and he, yeah. he'll he'll whip it out like he could today. Because, uh, but yeah, he he definitely has his feelings and lets it be known. 
Oh man, that BSV for life shit. Jesus. <laughs> Dude. For sure. Kool Aid is nice and strong over there. How do we feel? Did we get that right? Did that work? That was good. No, I liked it once you spun it up like that. Fucked no. up the number one. <laughs> it's all good. But yeah, maybe we'll just do that like next time we can have it just be a little yeah, outtake. Yeah, I think thing. it'd be, be a little like more Jenny fun. could add in like yeah, a yeah, drum yeah. roll kind of thing. Like, right, right. And uh, that's kind of what I was thinking. But yeah, we can just throw these things in here, see how they go. I think that was fun and, and worked. So yeah, no what biggie. was with the, the, the runes cosplay stuff? I guess uh, so, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe like Jenny can put in a picture, like so it like you put know, the horns on all of us for the segment. We'll yeah, see. exactly. If she can just maybe like put light like, some off. candles, like the seance one. Yeah, yeah. We, no one's got candles <laughs> right now. Yeah. yeah, we should get some candles for this segment. Yeah, let's have, a, uh, let's have like a tarot card reading or some shit. They're you know they're into that right like i know they're into that <laughs> i'm saying it mm -hmm. i sort we'll of am too i'm kind of admitting on that though yeah we'll see if the the tarot cards get dealt the right way for us after the having i guess um so yeah i guess we could kind of wrap up here stripes again i wanted to thank you anybody else please chime in but it's been a blast as always and we can obviously you know keep chatting a little bit after Stripes, thank you for buying a worm. Uh, I'll make sure you don't regret it as long as you hold it. Yes, yeah. Sir. Thanks for buying a worm because uh, you, you, it wasn't really too many uh, secondary sales on that. So thanks. Bring for, in volume. Uh, Not <laughs> many he people said, thanks for them. buying my bag. Wow, look at that shade! Oh my god. <laughs> no, he definitely didn't buy my bag. I got a couple of. Sure, them. I, I did. Even, sure, I don't I have did. them for sale. I have. Well, I do have mine for sale, but it's for like one BTC. Wow. Well, we'll let you guys go uh, and do your train robbery. It was fun hanging out. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm coming to your place, Craver. <laughs> What's that? I appreciate the ZK I'm coming tonight. to your place, homie. Yeah. Yeah. But I definitely appreciate you, uh, Stripes. Like I said before, I, I like the uh, legendary Pepe's. Uh, I did want you to just talk about how you came up with it. Did the artist or did you give some feedback to the artist? I mean, did you give them some ideas of input like or whatever yeah strategy yeah of, of well, what you envisioned or did they bring it to you and then you uh tweaked it a little bit i got you i got you so initially i went to him and i was just like you know i i appreciate your art like i, I think that you kill it every time you do it right so just run with it and that was kind of the first 25 and then i was looking at some of them and i'm like you know I, the, the art's good um but what if what if we made like one tweak right so the only other basically i guess thing that i really told him i was like hey um these initially were not meant to be pfps like the the way i kind of looked at everything ordinals related was collectibles so i was like you know they, they've got these gms and now they can have like a collectible pepe but then uh, some of the the individuals who were holding started rocking them as PFPs. So when I went to him, I said, you know what? The only thing that I would like just, you know, for you to keep in mind when you're doing these is would you think these are cool to rock as a PFP? Because we have people now doing it. And he was like, I got you. And then he ran with it. And I actually have a, a bunch that, that didn't make it in um, just because, you know, after picking and choosing through some of them, I was like, you know, these are great. But I think, you know, since these are being inscribed as cursed ordinals, um, I wanted it to kind of fit like that narrative for that last batch of Pepe's. So like every one of the Pepe's for me kind of was like more in that that curse narrative. But dude, he kills it every time. He's been involved in in doing the art for a lot of different projects. He's actually super prolific on chain. Um, and I, I can't sing his praises enough because he's also a super like chill down to earth dude. Um as you can tell, he doesn't really rock it out on X. Like he doesn't come and kick it in spaces. I I would love to get him in, um, but dude, maybe I'll uh maybe I'll put a bug in his ear and just be like, "Yo, come hang." Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think just five yeah. minutes, just ten minutes, I mean, right like, before the next drop like, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and and we'll see kind of how the the next drop goes, right? Uh, if if there is one. Well, there, so. Expect nothing. We're going to start there. Expect Fair. nothing. Lower those expectations nice and nice and low. And then, dude, you'll be happy regardless. But if I was to release something, um, any holder, 
currently I'm going to make sure that they're taken care of just because one, they, they fuck with what's kind of happening here in Ordinals and two, they're crazy enough to hold a JPEG that I put out there. Like, Hell yeah. Um, so I'm going to make sure that they're all taken care of for sure. But, uh, but yeah, the next thing that, uh, that I do, it will likely be of a different variation than what you've kind of seen prior, right? The first collection was a bit different. Second collection was a bit different, but it's in that same vein of kind of rewarding them. And, and you brought up like legendary Pepix, right? Like wh why use the name and everything like that? Um, it was kind of in my vernacular a lot of the time. A lot of the people that I was interacting with, it was just like, yo, what a fucking legend and then i was like you know what if we're if we're doing pepes how can we make them legendary dude we're gonna give them away for free so every legend that received one dude i hope you enjoy your legendary pepe i hope you enjoy being cursed because we're not making any more of those and honestly another fun fact that i don't know if a lot of people are kind of privy to yet if you go over to ord.io and then you go over to the filter. Normally, it kind of puts you on trending. But if you go to oldest stat, and then over on the left-hand side, there's an area that says range. And it'll start you on normal. But if you flip it over to cursed, you can see there's some beautiful cursed geese over there. But also, all of those cursed legendary Pepes are sitting there on some of the oldest block 9, 450x sats. So if you fuck with rare sats, if you like the idea of getting in on that first transaction... It's another nice little added bonif benefit to all of the legends that hold one. So yeah, dude, next thing I do, I feel like I kind of have to up the game a little bit, right? E even if it's these smaller collection sizes, try to put a little bit of intrinsic value to them. But uh, but yeah, man, uh, everyone that holds one of these, I've either talked to on a phone call, in the DMs, or you know, across the timeline just for interacting with the posts. Uh, to a lot of them, I've said this on spaces before, but absolute fucking killers. Like people that are either one slept on, two are just awesome project founders that probably don't have enough recognition, or three, just people who who are interested in ordinals and, and wanted to kind of figure out what what was going on from that that Twitter page. Um, I so I, I promise I won't go too far on a tangent. But a, another thing I really like and, and try to incorporate is just an experience. Like all of the GMs, um, you can go and see kind of on the page, but I'm not going to make you go through that. They were all like randomized as well as customized by the people they were given to. So you can see if you go and kind of scroll through some of the media, you, you'll see that it's basically posted that not everybody received the same graphics. Not everybody had the same form of randomization. And, you know, because of that, it added a little bit of gamification. And it, it also gave an option for them to be a little bit more personalized. Um, and I got to do that a little bit also with the legendary Pepe's. But, I, you know, the people who were kind of a crazy enough to fuck with me earlier on. Uh, they may or may not have gone through some challenges, right? There were people that actually also were eliminated. I don't think a lot of people were expecting that in the choosing process. Um, and then those people who were eliminated had the capability of a redemption arc. They uh, they had some, you know, instructions to follow via the DMs. But dude, gamification just made it so much more fun. And I'm not going to make you sit in a Discord and grind for fucking four years. Like it was two weeks from the time that the the jubilee happened to the last you know legendary pepe made it out 2 weeks of just grinding and talking and meeting with people you know virtually of course but like this is the the newest i guess version of a metaverse until everybody's rocking one of those nice apple vision pros um but you know for me it was just such a cool way to connect with people and for anybody that was willing to kind of you know be interested in what i'm doing dude i'm going to i'm totally going to hook it up so I just, I think that if we have more of that narrative here in Bitcoin, it's going to be a crazy bull run for the people who still hold whatever collection, right? You know, if you're as base to hold an ordinal worm or hold something from Goosenals or also hold a KMV, like, dude, these are all collections heavily slept on that I think are going to have their, their time in the sun, regardless of who is maybe looking at them right now. Yep. Yeah, well said. Thanks, Stripes. Um, pleasure to have you on, man. Nice to nice to interact with you. Uh guys, uh the great show, great second show. Let's wrap it up. And we are out.